Hello, and welcome to the lesson where we're going to walk you through SQL Developer and the development tool that we're going to be using uh, throughout most of this class. Uh, to jump right in, what I'm going to show you is that um, as you um, hover over this uh, icon here, SQL Developer, after you've gone through the installation process, uh, you double click on that and that will get you into the tool itself. And um, once it's open, um, I want to walk you through kind of just the structure of what this looks like. Most SQL development tools, whether you're using uh, a Microsoft tool or an Oracle tool or any other tool, uh, they look somewhat like this. Um, so the left pane over here kind of shows you uh, kind of the objects in the database that we're going to be working with, such as tables or procedures or sequences and indexes and all these different things that we're going to create and use. They'll be in this left-hand side. Um, so first thing you want to do is just just go ahead and um, click on the connection that you've already gone through and set up if you followed through the instructions. And that should get you logged in. And as soon as you do that, uh, it will open up this connection screen. And this connection screen is where we'll actually go and write uh, the different code that we want to write, whether it's you know calling the database to get some data out or to even go and create some, um, um, some data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull up a script here uh, that I have already uh, arranged and Sorry for this. I'm going to jump over really quickly here and grab it. And um, uh, inside of this um, code here, I'm going to run. I'm going to paste it in here. And again, this is something you'll do as you set up your tool. Um, I'm going to run this uh, script of code. And what it's going to do is it's going to go out and it's going to basically create a bunch of tables and relationships. And it's going to actually insert data into the database so that when we actually want to go and start practicing our SQL statements, uh, we have a database that we can use. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on this statement here, um, uh, this button right here. Uh, it says run script. Now you'll see another one here. It says run statement. We're not going to use that. We're going to run this run script button right here. And as I run that, um, we're going to let it go. And I always love to watch this because I'm a geek and a nerd, and I just like to uh, watch all of this, uh, you know, database come to life and get created. So as as we watch this, what's happening is it's creating tables. It's, it's uh, creating relationships. It's inserting records of data into all of these tables. And um, once it is complete, and you see this commit complete. Completed, that means that it has saved uh, the changes that we have made. And if I go over here and actually click on the plus button next to tables, you'll see that these are all the tables that we have created. So now we have access to uh, um, actually look at these tables. Um, and so what we've shown you here is just kind of the general structure. This uh, reports area down here, you're not going to need to be as familiar with. Uh, we're going to be focusing mostly on this um, left panel, which will show us uh, the different parts of um, the database that we want to utilize. So uh, we've gone out and created some tables. Uh, if we want to access uh, things such as an index, which we'll talk about in this class, uh, we can go and access those things here. So the most common thing that we're going to utilize is these tables. Uh, if I go and actually click on one of these tables and I open it up, you'll see that it will actually show me the table itself. Um, and you'll see a lot of different uh, options of things that we can actually look at. So first thing we can actually do is we can look at the columns on this table. So here you'll see that this, col uh, this table actually has five columns, the employee ID, the last name, first name, department number, and the manager ID of that employee. Um, here you'll see that we have the types of data that for each column we have to specify, is this a number or is it going to be a character? Um, we can establish whether or not it is a nullable column, meaning is do we allow blanks or no value? Uh, so an employee ID is required, so that means it is not nullable. Um, but a manager ID is not required, uh, meaning it's nullable. Um, and if it has a default value, um, that will be listed. Uh, the next thing is let's just kind of walk through, um, you know, actually looking at the data in, cell, in the table itself. So as I pull that up, you'll see here now if I click on the data tab, I can actually look at the records in this table. And here you'll see, you know, again, the, the ID, uh, the last name, the first name, the department that that person is in, and their assigned manager. And there are other tabs in here that as we progress through the class, you'll see uh, the constraints tab will show you specifically things like, um, you know, certain constraints that we put on this table, such as, um, you know, 
as we've kind of already mentioned, like first name and last name and employee ID are not nullable. You are not allowed to have them be blank, uh, which makes sense, right? If you're creating a new employee, you don't want to have a blank last name. You require that. Um, and other things like maybe we require a employee ID to be above zero. We don't allow a negative ID. But this is where we'd actually look up those constraints. There's a whole uh, load of other things that we can do, um, but what we'll do here is uh, just walk through and show you how we can access these things. I'm going to actually delete this code out of here. And um, what I will simply do is I'm going to write uh, a very basic select statement. And I'm going to go and ask uh, the database to give me all of the records and columns from the employees uh, database. And you'll see here, um, as we get into this uh, SQL statement syntax, you'll understand what a select star from employees means. But essentially what that's saying is, hey, give me everything from the employees table. Uh, and so this is where we can go and run our statements. Now, a couple of things to be familiar with. Um, you know, We have a lot of buttons in here, and so it's important to understand what they kind of mean. Uh, when we get into this class and we start running statements, and let's say I want to go and select everything from the uh, customer's OM table. Um, I can go and actually run that statement by hitting this play button. Um, if you are on a, a, a PC, you can hit control enter and that will just run the statement that you have selected. On a Mac, I believe it's command enter. Sorry, I don't have a Mac in front of me, but um, it's uh, pretty much the same thing. Um, so now we can have multiple uh, SQL statements sitting inside of our window, and if we want, we can um, you know we can run one at a time by selecting it and running it. Um, what a good practice is always is to end every SQL statement with a semicolon, and the reason why we do that is that the semicolon will. Um, basically stop the um, the database management system from looking further beyond that point. So if I have a, a semicolon here uh, at the end of this, uh, if I don't have a semicolon at the end of each statement and I say I want to hit run, what it's going to do is it's going to just Basically, from that point, it's going to grab everything um, in the code window, and it's going to try to run it all as a single statement. And uh, you can't run two statements at once. We have to run them one at a time. So the way that we can do that is if we put a semicolon at the end of each statement. Now when I select this and say run, the computer is going to go, OK, hey, here's this statement ending. Uh, so basically, that terminates the statement. If I, if I try to run uh, this statement, it will, it will run to the point of that semicolon. Um, and the reason this matters is that, again, we're going to write a lot of different select statements in this class. And so you'll just, you know, you'll, you might get in here and try to run some statement and, and it doesn't actually, uh, you know, return anything. It gives you an error. And that could be because, um, you know, you're not specifying specifically, hey, I only want to run just this portion of code. Or, uh, or maybe you need to end a statement with a semicolon or, or select just the code you want to run. Um, the other thing, too, is you'll see here the script button. Um, so running a script um, is useful when we do what we just did previously, when we actually went and created our database. So in that scenario, um, what we're doing is we're creating tables and relationships and seeding all of this data into the database. So I don't want to run a create table statement. I've, if you look over here, I've got a whole lot of tables. And I don't want to run a create table statement for each of those. So what I'll do is I'll just say, hey, I want to run all of this as a script. And simply what that means is I want to be able to run every single statement um, you know, one after another versus just saying, I want to run just this statement. So when you're creating and uh, you know, dropping your database and, you know, and refreshing your database, you'll probably run it as a script. Um, but if you are just running specific statements, you'll probably want to end them with semicolons and make sure that you run them just uh, as single statements. Um, some of the other buttons in here that we will get into here are the commit and the rollback button. This is kind of like the save and undo portion of your um, system. And this will apply when we start changing data. Um, the other things you can do in here, such as you can actually click on this uh, SQL statement and bring up another tab. So if you want to run uh, you know, more statements in other windows, you can do that. Um, the eraser tab will just clear everything for you. Um, but specifically, just remember when you're running single select statements and certain statements, we want to run those as simply as a, you know, a single statement. Uh, when you're doing a, a massive amount of statements at once, um, you know, we would run those as a script. Um, Let's just make sure we've covered everything here. So um, we've kind of walked through the structure of how you can look at the table, uh, how you can look at the data. Um, 
The other thing you can do is you can actually, we're gonna write uh, a lot of statements in, um, to, to do what we wanna do in this class. Um, so you could do something like, I could drop a table, which is essentially going to delete uh, a table. Um, and I could run that and I could drop it and you'll see here that it actually did drop the, uh, the, the, the table. I'm gonna recommend that you learn to write the code to do the things you want the computer to do. Um, as a technical person, it's better to know how to uh, do things with code because it gives you more flexibility and you can do more with the computer. Um, if you're doing everything through the GUI with the right click and clicking on things, you're limited to what the, um, what the tool itself can do. But you can actually go in here and do that. So I could actually go in here and find a table. Let's say like I'll find this invoice audit table. I can right click on the table um, and I can go in here and I can, you know, rename the table. I can drop the table. I can do anything, do all kinds of things with this table. So I went and actually wrote a statement earlier that dropped the table. You can also right click on it and, and uh, you can drop the table through the graphical user interface or the GUI. Um, but again, for the purposes of this, we are going to focus more on uh, using this, uh, you know, worksheet here where we can actually build the queries and run the commands we want. Uh, and the last thing probably to note is that as I go in here and you start to run statements, let's say I go in here and I, you know, I'm probably, uh, making this look so easy because I went in here and let's say I want to select from this, uh, this table called float sample. Um, all right, so I would go in here and I say select star uh, from and I write float sample. All right, now um, I didn't catch my spelling error and I run it. Uh, you'll see down here that sometimes if the code does not actually respond with a real, uh, you know, it, it doesn't actually have data or it doesn't know how to process the code, instead of actually showing you the data, it will process an error here. Um, so when you see that, um, this is something that non-technical people tend to do. Uh, they see error messages and they immediately close them and they're like, I don't know what that means. The computer's you know, screaming at me. So I'll just keep running this again like a crazy person and hope that it will you know, start working. Don't do that. Like, I can't stress this enough. I've taught many people who have never written a, code in, a line of code in their life and I always say read the error message, especially SQL error messages because they're, they're written in English and they're really easy to understand. So I just wrote this statement here. It said select star from flot sample. This error message, it, Get, you know, it does look a little ugly, but it says aura zero nine, you know, four two. Um, it says table and view does not exist. Well, let's just take a second to think about that. What does that mean? It says table or view does not exist. I don't know what a view is, but I definitely know what a table is. And it says table does not exist. So I can go back here and look at this and go, well, wait a minute. Flot sample. Oh, there we go. Float sample. Let me run that. Booyah. There we go. So don't ignore your error messages. That's one thing as you start to write your code, the first time you write code in this class, you're gonna have nine out of 10 um, you know, of your messages that you send to the server are gonna be errors. And so it's very, very important that you learn to process those error messages. Um, don't, don't fret when you start hitting error messages. One thing that you learn as a technical person is that you learn to just like hit the wall, you get an error message, you don't know what that means. Um, and so if, if Google is your friend, I can always recommend this. Uh, I'm gonna go and actually Google this error message. It says Aura00942. I'm gonna go Google it. And it says right here, uh, I'll just click on the very first thing I see. Um, and it says right here, you encounter this error, the following error message will appear. So it says you tried to run a SQL statement that references a table that does not exist. It's kind of funny how they just tell you like exactly what the error message is saying. But basically it's saying, hey, you know, this is your options here. One is that, you know, check to see if the table exists uh, or, um, you know, make sure that you spelled this correctly. So it gives you a lot of ideas. Uh, so that's my other tip is that you're using this tool is just not to ignore your error messages, um, not to use the GUI all the time. Let's learn to write this code and let's learn to process our error messages when they happen. Uh, the last thing is, let's say I love this uh, statement that I just ran uh, and it's so beautiful and I wanna save all my work because I'm writing all these really great, you know, SQL statements. Um, well, I don't wanna lose them. So what I can also do is just up, simply go up here and click on save and I can go and save uh, this uh, SQL file somewhere. Let's say I wanna save it on my desktop and I'm just gonna save it as uh, my practice SQL. And now uh, when I want to go back and access that, like if I'm doing a homework or something, I can always go back here. I have it right here and there's the file on my desktop and now I can always go back 
and pull that file back up. So I'm gonna stop there because I think that's just kind of the crash course of this tool. You're gonna to get very, very good at using this tool as you progress through the course. Um, but I hope that was helpful and we thank you for joining.